This might be out. Taken comfortably. That's a good catch in the deep. One run needed. This might run away to the boundary. Hello everyone, welcome to State Bat with Devesh. The show will come every Wednesday and Friday at 5.30 p.m. on TAC TV. This is first show in Canada which is exclusively dedicated to cricket. In coming days, we will bring various issues related to cricket in Canada. We will identify and invite upcoming players on the show who are working hard and want to do well for our country. In the coming series, we will call our former and present cricket star, umpire, coaches, to discuss the situation of cricket in Canada. We will also invite Cricket Canada officials and discuss different program initiated by Cricket Canada. So, idea is to understand the issue and play a constructive role in development of cricket in Canada. So, keep watching State Bat with Devesh. Today, we are very pleased to invite to our very upcoming cricketer of Canada, uh, Mr. Faisal Jamakanti and uh, Mr. Akash Gil, who is over the phone uh, from New Zealand. So, we will be talking to them and exploring what all they do for their cricketing activities, how they keep themselves fit, what are the things they need to improve upon. So, let us start with Mr. Faisal first. So, congratulations Faisal for taking most wicket from the Canada Canadian side in the World Cup, right? Yeah, so, you. would you like to tell something to us about your experience? How was it? Like how when you you know you, you were performing, mm -hmm. how did you feel? And yeah, how absolutely. You were yeah. I mean, um, f first of all, New it was in New Zealand, right? The, the yeah. cricket in New Zealand was amazing. It was just a great cricketing culture. The the weather is amazing. Great yeah. facilities. Um, you know the way that the players were treated was was really amazing. Okay. Um, and and overall, it was a great experience for me, not just for me personally, uh, because uh, even from a team standpoint, the guys that I was playing with, I mean, mm -hmm. we really bonded. We we've known each other for for a number of years. Um, and, and we really came together and, and gelled as a team. And I think obviously that had a, a huge part to play in my performance. Absolutely. Um, so, I mean, th the experience was just great. I mean, yeah. it was great to, to do well for myself, for the team, and, and just be around, yeah. you know, the, my, my, my teammates, my brothers. And, and I just wanted to ask good. that New Zealand is basically is a very windy country, right? The, uh, it is very windy. And yeah. You know, uh, most of the time I found that ballers find it very difficult to manage their swing. Mm -hmm. So what did you do to manage that? And well, I yeah. mean, I mean, yeah. There, there's a lot of times when, when you do have to manage swing, but but honestly, at least in the World Cup, um, it was it was used to our advantage because in a lot of in a lot of situations, the the, the tracks were very flat. There were good batting surfaces, mm -hmm. um, so getting having that breeze going and getting that that little bit of movement in the air, it, it really helps us as fast mm -hmm. bowlers um, mm -hmm. generate a bit of bit of movement off the wicket or, or in the air, and and we used that to our advantage, wow. um, the fast bowlers uh, mm -hmm. for our team, and then we, we, you know we did what we could. Okay, well. coming back to your like, uh, when did you started your cricketing, uh, you know, journey? So how did you get attracted to cricket? Because mm -hmm. in Canada we don't have, uh, you know, it's, an, it's not a very popular sport. Yeah. Right. Uh, I saw that kids normally goes for baseball, for ice hockey. Right. Uh, blah blah blah. But how did you get attracted to cricket? Well, I mean, I mean, touching on that, being born here and, and gr growing up here, I didn't, I didn't really know what cricket was at all. I played ice hockey for for most of my childhood. Okay. Um, but I was one of those guys that just, I just loved every sport, and I played pretty much every sport growing up. Mm. Um, I remember my my dad wanted to introduce me to cricket. We we were looking for like a tennis ball bat for uh, mm. you know a game at some park. Mm. Um, we went to this place actually, Cosmo Sports. It's a it's a cricket store and also an academy. Mm -hmm. um, and I saw some kids running some practice in the background in in, in the back of that shop and. I was like, yeah, I really want to give this a shot. Okay. Um, gave it a shot, and I absolutely loved the game, and, and didn't really look back from there. So. Okay. So, but uh, playing from ice hockey to cricket. Yeah. Did you see that actually in ice hockey, if I understand correctly, the muscles are built right. Your thighs, yes. and Your leg muscles are very strong. Yeah. Did it help you to become a fast bowler? It did. Bowler it did. Uh, you know, vastly, and that, and that's one of the things where sports, a lot of cross sports, training well in one will help you a lot in the other. Um, in ice hockey, I mean, it definitely it built me a foundation of, of you know growing with sports, and so and yeah, it definitely really helped in, in cricket as well. Absolutely. So, now is it is it a cricket now your full time profession, and you want to build your career out of cricket, uh, playing cricket? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. That that would be uh, the dream, and that's mm. the goal is to take cricket to to a next level, and you know maybe play for the, the Canadian national team as well as play abroad, and mm. and hopefully make a good career out of it. Okay, so one thing I just wanted to ask, and this is questions for every Canadian mm -hmm. cricketer. Uh, you know, in Canada, uh, we have a very long winter, right? So, right. 
how do you guys manage during the winter time how do you keep yourself fit uh, how do you make sure that your muscles are strong mm -hmm. and you can you know when the uh, the session come then you start right on the ground right um so obviously that's that's something that as as canadian players we had to overcome mm -hmm. um it's pretty tough you can't always travel so when you do train indoors you have to kind of find ways to get around that and make the most of of your indoor training but for me personally and i know a lot of other guys on the team as well um we try to travel when we can in those winter time periods try to um you know for me personally i go to india i train in pune okay um and so for me i've been doing that for the past three years every time it's winter time and we're indoors i, I head down to pune and i train over there so okay. and so i personally tackled it but i know a lot of people have a lot of uh, other ways of going about it. I just want to play it back. Mm -hmm. So you said that you always go to Pune during the off season, yeah. there, right? So when you go to Pune, how do you manage that contract? Who manages your contract with the Pune? Mm -hmm. There is somebody who is helping you to. Uh, so, um, so, so previously, Cricket Canada has uh, held camps abroad. Um, so mm -hmm. uh, we, we did have one camp in Nagpur actually. That was last year. So I spent about a month there uh, mm -hmm. from Cricket Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, but normally, when I go to India, it's actually uh, completely privately funded. I mean, I go by myself. Oh. Um, my my dad supports me with yeah. that as well. Okay. Um, and and I head down there and you know train on my own or okay. uh, obviously keeping in touch with coaches for. Canada as well. So um, I think it is before you played for Canada in World yeah, Cup. Yeah, it, it, it was before the same. It was before the World Cup. Yeah. Okay. So now, if you have to go and practice, is mm -hmm. there any program from Canada Cricket Canada um, to support your progress? Or? From Cricket Canada, not so much. Um, mm -hmm. If I do have to to train abroad, there won't be something from Cricket Canada specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why we kind of look elsewhere sometimes for for you know for opportunities if I can play you know maybe state level cricket in India or, or for a private club or, or something like that abroad. Yeah. Um, that's obviously something that we so, definitely look towards. So there is no uh, national academy kind of concept in Canada uh, to um, you know pick up the upcoming talent and right. keep the progress and give them a proper training so uh, so there is there yeah. is um, that kind of national academy there's the high performance um, uh, academy for Canada but the thing is it doesn't really go year long it generally mm -hmm. goes a few months before any major tours or tournaments that we have okay um, so yeah I mean I mean if, if we have something to train over the winter there's not necessarily something that we can go to as national players mm -hmm. um, which is why a lot of us we, we tend to go and train privately or, or on our own oh is yeah. it okay so for every player, like there is always a high and downs, right? Yeah, of course. and it is like for last uh, ten years, you said it's, you have uh, you have been uh, playing. I've been playing for about seven years now. Seven years. Yeah. So there must be very high and ups and downs. Yeah, of like course. there are a lot of struggles for you. Mm -hmm. So would you like to share with our uh, audience about your struggle? Yeah. Um, how did you manage till you know the national team? Sure. Uh, I mean, I mean, there's definitely a lot of challenges that you're gonna that you're gonna come into as a professional athlete. I mean, uh, just staying on top of uh, on mm -hmm. top of your own game, motivating yourself, dealing with injuries is a huge one. Dealing with uh, performance pressure is, is another big one. Um, so for me, as a fast bowler, injuries have been a part of my career. They will be a part of my career. Uh, you know, it's just something that you have to accept. Um, knowing how to deal with those situations, for example, injuries, knowing how to treat your injuries, how to kind of cope with your injuries and, and work around them, is definitely a, a, a huge part of mm -hmm. the of the job, essentially. Um, and another one of them is, is performance pressure, obviously. So uh, not being able to perform or, or not being, you know, picking up wickets, for example, as a, as a bowler mm -hmm. uh, or not scoring runs as a batsman is, is obviously, um, you know, something that, that you deal with a lot and mm -hmm. you're going to go through those rough patches. Yeah. But it's about pushing, putting your head down and, and really going back to the basics mm -hmm. um, and, and knowing what to fall back on, what works for you is, is obviously important. Yeah, So, but you raise a very uh, valid point and very critical point that uh, when there is an injury, mm -hmm. uh, is Great Canada is giving you a support uh, to heal through it? Yeah, and well, um, if if you were look, for example, I was injured actually on my first tour for Canada. It was an under seventeen tour to Houston. Mm -hmm. um, so I got injured in that tournament. Mm -hmm. I, I ended up getting a torn ligament in my ankle. Mm -hmm. So they they were able to uh, compensate for my physiotherapy um, and, okay, and such uh, oh. after I was I came. So back. there is a uh, uh, facility yeah. from yeah, Great Canada. Yeah. Absolutely. Now we'll be coming to our second year in, uh, guest, uh, who is Mr. Akaskill, and he is the first Canadian to score century in uh, World Cup, uh, under-19 World Cup, and uh, he made a history. So let's welcome Mr. Akaskill, and he's over the phone from New Zealand. So we'll we'll find out what he's doing in New Zealand, and what was his experience uh, there. So welcome Akas to the program. Thank you for having me, Devesh. <coughs> so yes, uh, congratulations Akash for becoming the first Canadian in under 19 World Cup to score a century. Oh, thank <laughs> you very much. It was uh, definitely a huge honor for that achievement. Yeah, yeah. 
and uh, you know it's something to always look back to and um, be proud be proud that you know you um, represented your country to the best of your ability yes. and um, you're in the history books <laughs> absolutely so can you describe the moment when you scored that century how was it like did you did you re realize that you have made a history or uh, you were you, it was a normal uh, inning for you uh, to be honest it was um, a bit of a shock because I only found out about the um, I only found out about the record in my post match interview with ICC mm -hmm. so um, yeah it was quite a shock but to me um, but the most important thing was obviously to help our team get a win. You know, obviously it was a big game. You know, we were playing against PNG, mm -hmm. so we obviously wanted to get a win so that we can um, go into the plate semifinals, right? Yeah. So um, you know, we were in a bit of a spot of bother where we were 86 for four. You know, we um, lost a couple of wickets early, so you know, I really took my, um, I really took the the pressure and you know really put the team on my back because i knew that you know a lot of a lot of a lot of pressure was riding on this game so like yeah, i really took a lot of a lot of that and i put it on my back mm -hmm. and i just put my head down and you know played through the whole innings mm -hmm. you know really cashed in on a lot of um opportunities where um you know i could score runs you know i made sure that i rotated the strike a lot and like you know, I was, always, I was always, whoever was coming into bat with me, you know, I was always making sure that they were comfortable at the crease with me. Okay. Because, you know, there was a lot of pressure going on in that game. But, you know, definitely it was um, an innings to remember. You know, it was probably yeah. the one, of, one of the most cherished innings of my career so far. Mm -hmm. You know, I definitely will remember this for a very long time. And, um, yeah, but mostly it was just about um, getting that win for Canada, you know, representing the country. Yeah, and, and we um, all are very know, proud of you. Doing well in the World Cup. Yeah, and we are all very pr proud of you. So, uh, oh, coming back you, to this you. question, which I also ask Fashal, that uh, how how did you get attracted to cricket? Right in Canada, because Fashal has has his own story. What was yeah. what is your story? How did you get get attracted to the cricket? I got attracted to cricket through my dad. To okay. be honest, my dad was. Um, a cricket player back in his days so oh. he had um they have these uh, morning t20 leagues that happen here in brampton mm -hmm. so he had his own team called tigers cricket club which was um a part of that league so he would always go up to games on saturdays and sunday mornings mm -hmm. so he would always take me and my brother and basically me and my brother would just try to find basically any bat we can use any ball we can use and just <laughs> you know, keep throwing it at each other, keep trying to hit the ball as hard as we can. Yeah. And basically from there on, I was about six years old. Mm -hmm. And from there on, it just, it just became a passion and I fell in love with the sport. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of credit has to go to my dad. He always wanted me to become a sportsman mm -hmm. and an athlete. So, you know, I'm really, I'm really happy and I'm really blessed to be, you know, to get this opportunity to be a cricket player and to be able to represent my country. And, you know, just to enjoy this, you know, this lovely sport because, you know, it is probably the best sport in the world, you know, so oh. I definitely am. <laughs> I'm just so grateful to be a part of it. So you're basically your 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 background is also from India, right? So your dad has come from yeah. India and then you get attracted to the uh, cricket due to your dad's <laughs> passion. Right? Definitely because, you know, you know, India has a lot of passion for the sport. Mm -hmm. You know, it's obviously one of the biggest sports around the world but it's also the biggest sport in india so like yeah. you know it basically runs in the blood yeah absolutely. so you know it was definitely um something i was born with you know yeah. it was a it was a it was a talent that i observed at a really young age my dad observed that too and he mm -hmm. just kept pushing me towards it and you know over the years i really just fell in love with the sport and it should become a career choice for me and i know it's going to be a good one so so I'm very, very happy that you brought this point that career choice. So, so yeah. is it is it your final choice that and there is no, uh, you know, plan B or C that if it doesn't work out, then I'll go to this career. So you are going to this career single uh, mindedly, right? There yeah. No, I mean, absolutely if, no if other you, plan. If you love something and you have a passion for it, I mean, there shouldn't be any, other you know, plans. distractions or any obstacles in your life to overcome them. So, you know, to achieve a goal, you know, you need to be. Yeah focus towards it you need to know that you know this is one option and it's your only option so you got to devote a hundred percent of your energy and a hundred percent of your time towards it mm -hmm. so i mean yeah i've been asked this question a lot you know whether if i have a backup plan or 
you know, if there's any other options I want to go towards. But for right now mm-hmm. and for the future, it's going to be cricket because cricket is the sport that I love and it's something that I enjoy doing. Mm-hmm. And I know that I'll enjoy I'll enjoy doing it for the next 20 years to come. So, yeah. you know, definitely it's obviously my number one choice and it's probably the only choice that I'm, I'm happy with. Okay, so coming back to uh, uh, your World Cup uh, heroics, so when you came back uh, from that World Cup, right, so yeah. did you get any reception from Cricket Canada, was there any oh, yeah, uh, coverage had, in the um, media? You know, our, first of all, we had our family and friends there, mm-hmm. you know, all the parents came out um, to show support, we had the president of Cricket Canada there, Ranjit Sani, so okay. that was obviously a good gesture to see that the president came out to just wish us congratulations, so like that was obviously... Mm-hmm. A, a really proud moment for us all to see that he's yeah proud of us and that he's you know yeah he's shown us that he's you know really yeah his, he gave all the encouragement you the, need right? yeah with the yeah. performances and the team and everything so that was really good mm-hmm. and then basically you know it was just good to be home you know we were away for a long time and uh, it was a good reception we got when we got when we got back home wow uh, Akas, I just wanted to ask this another question that uh, once you yeah. do something like that when you score the century, normally you feel a lot of pressure after that, right? Because a lot of expectation is now yeah. uh, weighing on you. The, so, how, how do you cope up with those pressures, right? How do you manage these pressures uh, in the coming matches? I mean, yeah, I guess there's a certain expectation after such, you know, performances from everybody at the World Cup. You know, everybody played a huge role all 15 members, you know, the coaching staff, everybody played a huge role into that World Cup squad mm-hmm. and that World Cup campaign. So everybody has a set of expectations going into the next season. So, I mean, it's basically, you know, how you take it personally. Mm-hmm. You know, I obviously, I obviously personally like to set a bar that's really high. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I like to always chase greatness so I always want to chase something big so you know for me it works it works okay because you know um, I was just brought up that way and you know a lot of credit goes to my coaches my at a younger age my dad my mom you know they really set that standard for me to always achieve something above my level so I mean it's just something that I've been brought up with and I know everybody who was in that World Cup squad or Faisal himself you know, they all set a high standard after that because they know that, you know, we competed against the top teams in the world and Absolutely, we still yes. managed to perform the best. So, yes. you know, it's basically how everybody individually handles it. Mm-hmm. And I know our squad that was at the World Cup has set a high standard for each other and I know they're going to achieve it and I know they're going to go beyond it. Absolutely. So, uh, coming back to Faisal, so this is the same question for you because now the expectation has gone up for you as well, right? Yeah. So you are the highest wicket taker from the Canadian side. Mm-hmm. So how do you manage this pressure? Is there anything different you do? Um, uh, you just don't think about that success or how do you manage those? Honestly, I, I think I do well under pressure. I kind of like the idea that everyone kind of expects you to do well mm-hmm. um, because uh, I, I just find that it's, it's twice, as, twice as good when you live up to the expectation. Mm-hmm. Um, so you definitely, you, you take that, you swallow in and, and you, you say, yeah, let me live up to the expectation. You know, I'm going to put in the work and I'm going to, um, you know, everyone's expecting good for me. I'm, let me, let me, let me do it good, mm-hmm. not only for them, but for myself as well, right? So yeah. I don't take, take the pressure as a negative thing. I mm-hmm. think it's something that, actually pushes us to do better and I think yeah. um, you know a lot of athletes have kind of figured out that that's the way to go about it that's a good way to deal with it so I'm also very curious to know and this question is both up for both of you uh, that this Canada is a multicultural society right mm-hmm. and so is your team so people are from various other backgrounds so how is the bonding in the team like how do you guys gel together um, so I, I I don't know so sorry I'm just gonna go before Akash here but um, I don't know yeah, if the Canadian on. has has something to do with it but for us um, being a multicultural team, it, it just feels really natural for us, and there's there's no kind of differentiation no in between. There's no barriers yeah. whatsoever. Um, yeah. Everyone just gels really well as a unit. Um, you know, as a team, there's everyone is, is fully included in, in the team. Nobody feels left out. Nobody feels like there's any kind of segregation in any any way like yeah. that. So I mean, it's something that we've grown up nice. uh, in in that kind of environment. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, so the environment is very healthy. You yeah, guys, absolutely. you know, pull each other's leg as well, yeah, and you know, sure. encourage as well, right? Each other, very <laughs> nice. What was your experience, Akash, about the team? Oh, our, our 
our team was basically a family, to be honest. Yeah, wow. You know, we we were together for two years, you know, from the first tournament we played down in Houston, mm-hmm. you know, then towards the um, qualifiers and then the tour down to the West Indies. Yeah. You know, we've been through a lot together. We've seen some really good performances on the team. We've seen some really, you know, hard ones that, you know, really left a mark. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it really... It really made us play with our heart on our sleeves, to be honest. I mean, we were just, it, it was just, you know, something that you always want to see in a team. Mm-hmm. The spirits were high, you know, everybody was just relaxed with each other. You know, you yeah. can you can always joke around. People mm-hmm. know when there's time to joke around. People know mm-hmm. when there's time to be serious. You know, and a lot of credit has to go to our coaching staff. Yeah. You know, they made, they made that environment <clears throat> so, really friendly. Yeah. You know, okay. and then obviously... Our captain, Arslan Khan, you know, he yeah. he also kept the environment really casual really and kept it really. Yes. Really and yeah, he, he did have all the right? credit so for like that. Nobody as well. really got yes. tired of each other. Everybody was really, you know, really gelling together. And it's probably one of the best team environments I've been in. Mm-hmm. And I know me and Faisal, I know Faisal can agree with this too. Like, we were just, no matter if it was on the field or off the field, we were always together. There was no groups in the team. Mm-hmm. everybody would do things together and we would just enjoy each experience so definitely one of the best team environments I've been in okay so coming back to your New Zealand uh, stay right now which you have uh, I think you you have gone to New Zealand to play for the first class cricket there yeah so basically um, I've been on a uh, sort of an exchange program with um, uh, my club back home which is uh, Ontario Cricket Academy mm-hmm and it's been arranged through um, my coach, head coach, Derek Pereira, mm-hmm. and also with my um, New Zealand coach here, who is Dylan Raj. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> basically, they set this program up two years ago, and um, I've been coming to New Zealand on the <clears throat> throughout the off-season, mm-hmm. which is um, throughout the Canadian winter. <clears throat> so, basically, I've been playing here. The main... The main um, purpose for this trip was to um, obviously prepare for the World Cup being it in New Zealand Mm -hmm. you know getting adapted to the conditions and you know really having an edge going into the tournament yeah so that that was the main purpose for my trips back um, towards last year and the year before that but mainly now it's um, yeah obviously trying to take my game to the next level and obviously you got if you want to do that you're gonna have to play a high class of cricket so you know obviously the, the goal right now mm-hmm. for the upcoming summer here in New Zealand and for next year and the coming years is obviously to get a first class contract okay. you know to be able to play the long format of the game you know being able to play four day five day cricket with the red ball mm-hmm. being in different environments different conditions obviously something that's going to better me as a player mm-hmm. both as a batsman and an all rounder so mm-hmm. being a bowler as well yeah. <clears throat> so basically yeah that's the mm-hmm. um sort of situation and the sort of um, plan we have here in New Zealand and it's been a prog it's a, it's been in progress for the last two years and it'll definitely be an option for you know me and a few others in the coming years as well yeah so I'm very very happy to hear that you want to play for like three days four days because I have never seen in Canada anybody talking about the test cricket uh, especially the youngster, maybe they don't understand and don't find any feasibility in playing three days, four days. But actually, for me, because we come from the old school, right? So we think that yeah. uh, Test cricket is the real cricket. But uh, I'm very yeah. happy that your objective Definitely. is to play for the longer version of the cricket. And what about you, Faisal? Are you attracted to a Test cricket? Do you think that there is any career option? Um, I, I think that, that that Test cricket or, or longer format cricket is you can definitely learn a lot um, in that kind of cricket. I've played uh, several day games in, in Barbados, actually in the West Indies before, um, so I can attest to just how difficult it is. It really lives up to its name, Test cricket. It's a very, um, you know, it's it's a very thorough test of uh, you as both an athlete and, and as a cricketer. Mm. Um, but uh, for me personally, um, I, I don't see myself playing a longer format. Uh, of a game. Um, I'm, I'm more interested in, in the limited overs games. That's mm-hmm. more what I specialize in, in the 15, 20 over formats of the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I can definitely see uh, the longer format game being used as a tool. I would love to play it to better my game. Yeah. Uh, but as far as the career goes, I mean, I, th- I think yeah. for me personally, I would stick to limited yeah. And overs. please don't mind uh, this question because I mm-hmm. belong to an era when our coaches used to tell us, uh, come behind the line, right? Always be behind the ball, mm-hmm. right? But now I think that most of the time players want to 
keep a side of the you know <laughs> side of the <laughs> line so that they can hit the ball right so <laughs> yeah. so that's the difference of generation so mm -hmm. but anyway but so this this is the common questions and i will come one by one uh, to both of you who is your favorite player uh, fasal is going to answer first and okay. who you who do you idolize uh, and think that you want to become like him who for me it's it's brightly um, as, as a bowler, as a person, as an athlete, uh, everything. I mean, he's, he's uh, and he was real fast, right? Yeah, so he was, you want absolutely. to become like that? I mean, I don't know if I can quite reach where he Why was, not? but but yeah. definitely, I mean, he's definitely a, a, yeah, a role model goal. for me. So. Oh, lovely. So, what is one thing uh, about the Bradley mm -hmm. you like on the field and off the field? Which you think you should like to um, something that's kind of a combination of both is just his work ethic. Um, mm. I, I've read his biography, I've, I've seen a biography of him as well, and, and I, you can obviously tell by the nature of, of the kind of person he is and the kind of athlete he is. Mm -hmm. um, his work ethic is there. He works really hard. Um, not only does he work hard, but he works smart. Um, you can see in his bowling action, one of the best in the world. He's mm -hmm. got super efficient bowling yeah. action. Very, very um, simple. And, yeah. and uh, his hard work pays off. I mean, he's one of the greatest bowlers, one of the greatest fast bowlers to ever mm -hmm. play the game. So. Mm -hmm. So basically, he was able to accelerate at the last moment, right? Because mm -hmm. of his actions. Uh, how do you do? You have the similar action, or um, well, you? I mean, I try to. I yeah. obviously I'm not quite up there with Brett Lee yet, uh, yeah. but I do understand the biomechanics um, aspect okay. of the bowling, uh, okay. primarily because of my coach in England, Ian mm -hmm. Pont, mm -hmm. uh, he specializes in the biomechanics aspect oh, great. of okay. of bowling. Um, so he's so, helped me a lot. So you hired years. that coach uh, um, on your yeah, own, so or he, so said, yeah, I sought him out uh, privately. It was actually my dad who found him originally. Okay. Um, so we did a couple of online courses with him. I visited oh. him. Visited him sorry in England mm. um, I went to a couple of his camps as well in, in Bangalore in Hyderabad in India so um, you have a road map uh, given by that coach yeah so which you are following to increase your uh, speed yeah and exactly keeping up the line and length everything right, right. okay great mm -hmm. so coming to you Akas uh, who is your favorite and uh, you know the player who you like to become like right and who do you idolize um, I think for me um, I think my my most favorite player of all time has to be Adam Gilchrist. Oh, um, the both Australian, Australian keeper. Huh? <laughs> Great. I yeah. mean, uh, I know I'm an all rounder, but you know, just the way he um, he changed the game of batting. You know, mm -hmm. the aggressive nature of what he brought to the game, both in the one day format and in the test match format. So obviously, he's made a huge impact. You know, to be able to <coughs> still play his natural game in both formats and do incredibly well you know mm -hmm. he has success in both formats mm -hmm. and um definitely is one of my role models but at the moment i would have to say it's um definitely virat Kohli. um mm -hmm. he's obviously one of the players that i want to aspire to be you know to yeah. be able to have success in all three formats mm -hmm. at just an insane an insane level you know it's just the way that um you know the, um, the amount of hard work he puts in and then you know the just the amount of hunger he has for the game and how, how much he wants to win you know it's definitely something that a lot of the young cricketers wouldn't need to see so that they know like you know what the standard is of the international level and of the international player right absolutely so yes. i would definitely have to say at the moment the person that i would definitely aspire to be mm -hmm. and hopefully one day become um, is obviously virat kohli yeah, I wish you all the best because the very important point you put across, uh, Akash, is that hunger. As long yeah. as you have, both of you have the hunger, you can go miles and miles mm -hmm. and achieve a lot of achievements and a lot of laurels, bring a lot of success for the country. So, from my side, I can wish you all the best. Thank you very and much. And thank thanks, you very much. Thanks very much. Thank you very much for coming to the show no and giving us some time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you Akash. Thank you. Thank you. It was great you. speaking Thank to you. both of you. Not long ago, cricket was a very popular game in Canada. In fact, it was so popular that our first Prime Minister, Sir John A. Macdonald, declared it national sport. But slowly, hockey gained popularity and cricket lost the premier status of national sports. Today, Canada is an associate member of ICC, but it is nowhere near to get the status of test playing nation. Whereas small countries like Bangladesh, Afghanistan have achieved the status of test playing nation. So in coming episode, we'll explore the reasons and we'll find out what is the future of cricket in Canada. Stay tuned and keep watching. Stay bat with Devesh. This might be out. Taken comfortably. That's a good catch in the deep. One 
run needed. Just might run away to the boundary. 